Sorry I couldn't be there today, guys, but here are the instructions for what we're going to be doing today. You guys are going to be building a graph. Uh, you're going to graph out the periodic trends of both atomic radius and ionization energy. And so you guys are going to need the handout from the sub. The handout has a graph like this, and on the other side are the instructions. Take a look at both sides. This is where you'll build your graph. All right. Um, you're also going to need some data. So this data is uh, going to come from the sub. On uh, one page, it says the atomic radii or atomic radius of the elements 1 through 36. And on the other side are the ionization energies of those elements 1 through 36. You're going to graph both sets of these data on the same graph. I'll show you how to do it. All right. So let's first talk and review a little bit about what atomic radius is. Atomic radius is the size of the atom measured from the nucleus to the outer orbital boundary. Um, kind of looks like a circle, right? And we go from the nucleus all the way to the outer boundary. And ionization energy is the amount of energy it takes to remove an electron from an atom. The higher the number, the harder it is to remove those electrons. All right, let's do it. So, um, when we make a graph, we have to make sure that we have our scale correct. Uh, we're going to be using two different scales. Uh, we're going to use one scale on the left. Uh, the left y-axis is going to be for atomic radius, and the scale on the right y-axis is going to be for ionization energy. Let me explain. The highest number, so this is atomic radius that you're looking at right now, the highest number on all of the atomic radii that's listed on this data page is this one, 243. Now, I counted up the number of lines up the y-axis, and there are 25 lines that we can go, go up to. And 25 goes into 243 about 10 times. And so what we're going to do is count by tens on the left y-axis. Let's look at the ionization energies. Let's find the highest one here. The highest ionization energy is 24.6, and so on the right-hand uh, y-axis, the highest number is going to be 25. Gosh, you know what, guys? We have 25 lines. Let's count by ones. All right. If you don't know what I'm talking about, guys, don't worry about it because I'm going to help build a graph with you right here from my little app. Let's get started. So here is what our graph paper looks like. Let's label all of our axes. I'm going to write atomic radius on the left y-axis, and I'm going to write ionization energy on the right y-axis. And note on the bottom, it's already labeled for you, atomic number. So, uh, like we said before, we're going to label, or rather count by tens on the left y-axis. So I'm going from 10 all the way up to 250, because that was the highest number that we had. And you know what, let's be, before we do the ionization energy, let's remind ourselves, what's going on the x-axis is the atomic number. There's 36 lines, so let's count 1 through 36. Those numbers represent each of the elements that we'll be looking at today. All right, and now what we're going to do is Label those numbers for ionization energy on the right y-axis. We're going to count by ones all the way up to 25. Okay, now we are going to graph. Let's graph the atomic radius first. Now what I'd like you to do is use two different colors. You can use a marker if you'd like. Um, two different colors. Always use a ruler too when you make your lines. Uh, let's see. The first color I'm going to use is red. So let's go ahead and put the first number there. Let's see, for atomic radius, it's uh, for atomic, for number one, for hydrogen, it is 53. Uh, for number two, for helium, it is 31. So put two dots right there, and using a ruler, I'm going to connect those. Um, I very quickly did the next period. Take a look. 167, 112, 87, 67, 56, 48, 42, 38 is all there, and I'm going to connect these. Please note that I'm not connecting 2 to 3. I want to keep the periods different. Um, take a look at the next period down. So the numbers I'm going to graph are 190, 
145, 118, 111, 98, 88, 79, 71. And I'm going to connect those. What I'd like you to do is finish the rest of the graph using that data that you got from the substitute. All right, now what we have to do is graph out ionization energy. And this time we're going to use the scale on the right y-axis. All right, our first number for our ionization energy that we're going to graph is 13.6, which is right about there where that arrow is. I'm going to plot it out. My second number that I put is 24.6. And now I'm going to connect those lines. There we go. Hey, note how, take a look at the first red line and the second, uh, the uh, first purple line. Notice how one goes up while the other goes down. All right, let's do the next period. I'm going to uh, plot out 5.4, 9.3, 8.3, 11.3. 14.5, 13.6, 17.4, 21.6, and I'm going to connect those. Note how I'm not connecting the two periods, right? I'm not going to connect two to three. It's going to be separate lines. Let's do the next one. Actually, I'm not going to do the next one. Here's what I want you guys to do. I want you to finish the rest of the graph um, using the data that you got from the substitute teacher. Once you guys have finished this beautiful graph that you're producing, I want you to answer these six questions here. So uh, these six questions are found on the other side of the graph that you're building, and you can write your answers right there on page 18 of your notebook. If any of you guys have any questions, uh, re-watch the video today. Otherwise, I'll take a look at what you made on Thursday. See you then.